Hey guys, happy Friday night. Welcome, welcome to the Dixie Belle paint page. My name is Tracy and I am the owner of Tracy's Fancy. And uh, tonight is my first night here on Dixie Belle paints page and I want to thank them for having me. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to share some painting techniques and uh, get to know some of you guys and I'm hoping some of my followers are joining us too. So my husband Matt is behind the camera. So please feel free to ask questions as I demonstrate for you here and um, he will relay those to me and while I'm working. So uh, I wanna start off by telling you guys that um, I am a furniture refinisher and a room designer and I've done this for about seven years and I am new to Dixie Belle Paint as a brand ambassador. I'm not new to their product. Oh, actually, Matt, can you plug this in for me? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had my mic on, but not plugged in. So, able to hear me a little bit better. Um, anyway, I'm not new to their product. Um, I've used their product off and on throughout the years, and I've always loved it, but I had an opportunity to come on as a brand ambassador and help promote their paint, and I'm really, really excited about that because it's a wonderful product to use, and I want to demonstrate for you uh, demonstrate to you that tonight. Um, but we are doing a giveaway tonight. Dixie Bell is offering $25 to in, in a paint product of your choice. We won't choose that tonight. We'll choose the winner on Monday, but it's the person who actually leaves at the end of the video, the 100th comment. So I think that's to encourage you guys to comment. Matt, do we, I cannot see you guys. I'm used to filming my own videos and seeing my own comments and my own thumbs ups and hearts and all of that good stuff. So, do we have some activity? Uh, Terry Courtney is, uh, Yay. Brock is watching. Yes, Terry, Terry's, Terry's my buddy. Hi, Terry. Hi, thanks for joining and being here tonight. Um, so anyway, I think that's it as far as that goes. So I'm gonna get started. So let me tell you a little bit about this piece right here. This is, this piece is a monster, you guys. When you turn it around on the other side, it's a, it's a bar. It's a full working bar. And um, usually I film, I like to film my lives inside, but this piece is too big and weighs way too much. So um, we are out in the shop tonight. Um, anyway, you can see the color of the piece right here. And um, I clean this piece really, really well. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've always been a vinegar and warm water girl. And um, I've, I admit that openly, that that's what I've always used to clean my pieces. I thought it worked pretty well. But where did that little jar go? Here we go. Um, I used White Lightning. It's by Dixie Bell. It is their cleaning product. I don't think they've carried it for a long time, but I think it's fantastic. Um, it is, I didn't know this, but it's actually a powder form. It comes to you like in crystal form. And um, you just mix a couple tablespoons in with some warm water. And I could not believe the, the grunge that I got off this piece. Even though I took grunge off and then we're gonna make it look like it's grunged all over again. I called this cowboy grunge. This piece is called my cowboy grunge piece. So anyway, I highly recommend this, especially um, if, you've got, if you are uh, picking up pieces that have traveled and are old or antiques that have a lot of oils on them and uh, nicotine and things like that. This stuff is amazing. So uh, I was impressed, very, very impressed. Um, Okay, so what else I did is I covered the entire front of this piece with a primer. And the reason I did that is I did get bleed through. I did a small test area and I did have bleed, which I'm sure by looking at this wood that you're not surprised by that. It's very typical of like your oak cabinets, kitchen cabinets, and, and a, a lot of time we get some pretty bad bleed through with that. So bleed through is when the wood tannins comes through the paint product. It doesn't usually show up right when you put your chalk paint on but it does show up when you put your sealer. If you use a sealer, not necessarily a wax, but if you use a, a polycrylic sealer, then it sometimes will pull the, the wood tannins through your paint. So you won't know it sometimes until your project is completely done and you've put your heart and soul into it and hours of work and it's beautiful and then you go to seal it and you get all this bleed through. So um, I highly recommend doing a test spot, which I did, and I got some bleed. So I used the Dixie Bell Boss. This comes, this is their primer. It blocks um, odors, stains, and it stops bleed through. And it did, 100% it did with one application. This is clear. It comes in clear and white. You might wanna know why you would need clear versus white. If you are a furniture painter and you already know this, forgive me while I explain this, but, um, 
If you think that you want to block color, let's say it's a super dark wood and you want to go to a white or a light paint like a pale pink or a yellow, well, of course, a white primer would help. I mean, it would save you in paint. You could, you could prime and that's really one coat because you've already blocked it with white and then you put your paint on top of that and you might be able to do it with just one coat of paint because this paint has amazing pigmentation and coverage. Um, but, I used the clear, and the reason I used clear on this piece is because I want, we are distressing this piece. This piece has been sanded, all the edges are sanded, and I didn't wanna sand off my turquoise paint. I wanted to sand my turquoise paint off and see wood, the, the natural wood. I didn't wanna sand it off and see white primer underneath. So they came out with this amazing, um, this amazing primer that says clear, but look, it's white in the jar, which really threw me for a loop because like I said, I'm learning all of this. I'm learning all of this product and um, they're not kidding. You put it on, it goes on white so I could see where I'd put it, which is genius. And then it dried and within about 20 minutes as it starts drying, it turns clear and you can't see it at all. So if you will look right here, this has been primed. This is primed with the clear primer. Um, so it's ready to paint. All right, so let's get started. Um, I, I want you to see right here, this, I did this on purpose. I wanted you to see the difference between one solid coat of a color and then what it looks like when you have faux aged it or when you have faux it, which this has been aged and distressed. So that's a huge difference. Look at all of the depth and the dimension that we have going on on this side versus this, which if this is the look that you're going for, that's great. But if you look at this and you think, oh, I could, you know, I could probably do that. Well, this is what you're gonna start with. So, you know, there's a lot involved in um, aging and distressing. It isn't difficult, but it is a, a, a step there are steps and it is a process. So I wanted to be able to show you the difference. All right, before I get started on aging and distressing that, um, I'm gonna paint this side for you real quick because I did not want to lose an opportunity to show you how amazing this coverage is. Um, I always start with a damp brush and let's see, I'll use this brush. Um, this is my Klingon brush. Um, I'm also new to Klingon brushes. Do I need to lean in or can they see me? The phone looks like it's going that way. Okay, good. So um, I do usually dampen my brush first. So I've got a spray bottle here. I'm gonna use the spray bottle a lot tonight. Um, and y'all forgive me. I think um, I think where our goal is around 20 to 30 minutes, but I, I tend to go kind of long, I'm sorry. And I really wanna finish the front of this. So I'm hoping that's what we can do. So I've got my, my uh, damp brush and the paint in here, it's a very, very, very thick paint, and I just want you to see the amazing coverage. This is one coat. This is one coat of paint, okay? Um, and we aren't gonna do more than one coat because we are doing a lot of layering. So I just want to get some really good coverage on here first, and then we're gonna move over here while this dries and we will faux it. So, like I said, I am so impressed. Um, the paint is very thick. You can actually water it down. If, if, thick, if thick is not good for you, you can water it down, but it's not too thick to move. It moves really, really well. Spreads out really well. All right, so you see that coverage? Isn't that amazing? So I'm gonna go ahead and move all the way over to the other side. I know you're looking at my back but I think you can still hear me, I'm hoping. Do we have any questions, Matt? Uh, no questions are coming through. It's just showing me a few people that are logged on. Oh, you are, are you not able to see your comments? I do not see any comments. Hmm. I may have to jump on you guys over there where Matt is for just a second and see if we've got um, our comments hidden. Matt doesn't, he's willing to do this, but he doesn't do Facebook Live. <laughs> He's not super technical, so he doesn't understand what to do. It's a little bit of a swipe, but I don't want him to cut us off. So let me go over there and check that out. Y'all give me one second, because I don't want to miss an opportunity. All right. Um, no, they should be coming up right there. That's who's on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Oh, baby. 
Hold on, guys. Hmm. Okay, well, I have never had that happen before. So, you guys, will y'all please shoot, um, have you had thumbs up or hearts come across? Nothing. I'm sorry guys, I really do live videos all the time on my Facebook page, so I'm not sure what's happening, but um, we are able to see who's on and how many of you are on, but I'm not seeing any comments at all. So I'm hoping that Terry is still on with us, Terry with Dixie Bell Paint. Um, can you make sure that you're answering comments for me? <laughs> I feel bad. I'm just going to keep working then, okay? So, um, do, can y'all send us some thumbs up or hearts? and let us know that you're there. Do you see any of those? God, that's really bothering me. Oh well, I'm assuming that you guys are just gonna wanna watch me paint, <laughs> so I feel bad now. Oh no, I can't stand it. Now I'm gonna, I feel like I'm having to talk the whole time. Hold on. Let's see. Oh. There we go. It, that comment came forward. I don't know why. Maybe nobody's commenting. Okay, well, I just commented hello, so I don't know. Sorry, guys. I'm, we're not avoiding you. Um, we are just not able to see the comments, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so that color, let me tell you what color that I just used. The color that I just used is called Pure Ocean. That is this color right here, and that's the color that I just did right here, one coat coverage, okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to the next step where I'm gonna um, deepen in this area and I'm gonna use Peacock, which is a dark, dark, I guess you would call it like a teal or a dark turquoise. I tend to think teals go more into the green, so um, I think this is like a dark turquoise, but it's Peacock, that's what it's called, Peacock. So, um, let me show you guys how I do this. Uh, I use one brush for each color of paint, so I've got my Pure Ocean paint and um, my brush, and then I'm gonna use my smaller brush here. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of water in that area and spray down my brush really well. I usually use a paper plate, and I put my uh, paint in, and I kinda dab it out on the plate a little bit. And then I'm gonna just kinda slap this on in these deep areas right here. Now, I, um, my furniture designs are usually uh, very full of detail. I don't do a lot of color blending or a lot of faux or a lot of waxes um, because my, custom, my, my customers kind of guide what I am going to do, obviously, because most of them are custom orders. And I get a lot of requests for uh, details and that are perfect like you have to you have to draw them out and so I don't get to play like this very often and I'm this is really really exciting to me so now I'm going back to my pure ocean with my bigger brush and I'm gonna kind of move this in move this around just like that kind of smear that in and I'm going to go ahead and bring it into this middle section a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more wet so I can move it in. I'm hoping y'all can see what I'm doing here. So this isn't super, super obvious. Um, now I'm taking my light color again the pure ocean and kind of start bringing it in like this back and forth across the front and I have to watch this side over here because obviously I want my sides to match so I do both up and down side to side bringing in the darker teal a little bit to the middle here Now this side is obviously much larger than that side, so we've got a, a bigger space to work with. 
So I want to bring in the darker just a little bit more. Just like that. Hey, Matt, will you go ahead and get the heat gun set up for me too? So still the only comment you saw was mine? Darn. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully Terry's on and answering comments, but I tell you what I will do guys. Um, when the video is over, I am more than happy to go back and I will answer all of the comments for you. Um, and I hope you are commenting because we are giving away Dixie Bell is giving away the, the $25 in, um, free paint, uh, or $25 in paint. So this is a pretty large area that I want to highlight here in the front. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I'm going to use my larger brush now and go ahead and put it in the dark peacock because I do want to bring that in a little bit further here. And we're going to add, um, we are going to add some green here in just a minute. Um, this has a really, you can see right there, you've got a really good green. And then after this, we're going to start working with the wax, which is my favorite part. Um, we're going to be adding the dark wax, which is kind of like adding dirt and dust. And it really, I love that part. Okay, I think that's nice and soft. We've got like a highlighted area in the middle darker on the outside like so all right so the next color that i'm going to be working with is mermaid's tail and this definitely is a teal um it's a beautiful blue green i love it it's more a little more on the green than anything else we have comments what all right i see comments love the color from indiana yay i wonder if terry was able to reset something or from her end. Thank you. Thank you. I was feeling so alone. Ah! Okay, great. So who is someone from Indiana saying she loves the color? Yes. So yes. do yes. I. Yes. Thanks. Yes. You. Yay. Oh, my people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks you guys for hanging, hanging out with us while we figured out what was going on. That was crazy. Um, all right, so yeah, we've got we've got the uh, we've got the aqua, the light aqua in the middle, which is pure ocean, and we've got the um, what's the other one? The darker peacock around the outside, and so now I'm going to add the mermaid tail, and as you can see over here, it's heavier on the outside, so I'm going to take my brush here, and I've used my plate. I just kind of rub it all over, and I just start bringing it on right on top. And I don't know, I'm hoping you guys can see that. I think it's kind of subtle on the screen, but it's, um, you can see it really well, right, Matt? You can see the... Yes, you can see it well. Meredith wants to know where you purchased this product. Dixie Bell Paint, um, you can purchase, I'm, I, if Terry is on and she's adding the link, um, you can purchase it at Dixie Bell Paint, DixieBellPaint.com, it's B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and I believe she'll probably, someone from Dixie Bell will put a link on for me, and if not, I will be happy to put the links on um, when the video is over. You can order directly from there or if you go to the Dixie Bell Paint page, uh, which we're on right now. Um, and there are also retailers all over the country and um, I believe that you can do a Google search for a Dixie Bell Paint retailer that is near you. The retailers would love you for that. All right, so I've highlighted around the outside um, with the teal and now, I'm also going to highlight across the bottom with the teal and the, uh, the peacock, the mermaid tail and the peacock, okay? So again, spritz a little bit of water across there. What brushes are you using? These are called Klingon brushes. Um, they're made specifically for chalk type paints. Um, and they're really amazing. And this is my first time to use one. This, there are several different uh, variations and sizes. This is a medium round. 
This one's a medium flat, I think it's called. I'm not real familiar with exactly what they're called. Okay, so I'm adding this to the base. I think I might be a little low for you guys down here to see. So um, chalk paint or milk paint? This is a chalk paint, a chalk mineral, a mineral chalk paint. All right, now I'm going to add um, a little bit of the light color on top of it. And this video is live and it will be available for you guys to come back and view. It will be on the Dixie Bell paint page. I'll also be sharing it on uh, my own personal page, which is tracysfancy.com. And actually, you guys, if y'all are not following me, my, uh, my uh, Facebook page is tracysfancy.com. Uh, one of these paints is Pure Ocean, is that correct? Yes, pure o this light is Pure Ocean. Um, the darker around this outer edge is called uh, Peacock, and this one up here is Mermaid's Tail. The more green is Mermaid's Tail. Um, not tracysfancy.com, you guys. I'm on Tracy's Fancy on Facebook um, and Instagram, and I would love it if you guys would follow me too. I will be sharing lots and lots of projects um, with the Dixie Bell paint. Okay, so now I've got... Um, Why are you spraying that with water? I spray it with water because to me it makes it just a little bit more workable. It makes the paints um, a little bit more open to blending together and not staying so separated in their color. And chalk paint is very grabby. It, it's, a, it's like a dry paint, so it will uh, it dries really, really quickly. So you don't have a lot of open time. You've only got about... Uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes of open time. So um, I like to spray it with water and keep it nice and wet. And you can see, um, you can see it here. You can see the sheen that it, that's meaning that it is still, uh, it's still wet. And I like that. I want to be able to work with it. So it's a process getting, getting this look. It's definitely a process. So we're almost done here. We're almost ready to start um, adding the wax and giving it all of that depth and dimension there. Now, um, this here is a color blending process that's super popular right now. I know uh, a lot of the furniture artists are doing it. I know there's another Dixie Belle brand ambassador that you guys all are so familiar with, uh, Brandy, and she does the color blending on the pieces, and she's, she's like the expert at it for sure. Um, so if you were going to do this and you wanted a clean look, a lot of hers are very, very, her looks are very clean. If you wanted a clean look and you wanted to stop here, that's fine. But we're not going for a clean look tonight. We're going for a very aged and distressed and dark. dark. You see this over here is very dark and grungy and I, that's what I call it. I call it cowboy grunge. It looks very cowboyish and uh, very Texan and... Um, so we are going for dark and grungy. If you were going to go for a clean look, you could just seal this before uh, you started adding other colors. Like at this point, you could put a clear sealer on it. You could put like the gator hide sealer on it and let that dry and then come back and start doing your color blending and glazing on top of the sealer. That um, means that your chalk paint wouldn't distress at all. Um, but our chalk paint is going to distress and I'm not going to seal it. I'm actually um, putting color on it now and then we're going to put some wax on it. I'm going to rub the wax and when I do rub, it's going to rub off the chalk paint a little bit on the edges. But I'm after that. That's exactly what I'm after. So I'm not going to seal in between. Did you use a boss when you started? Yes, I did. I, I went over that at the beginning. If you happen to miss the beginning, um, I did. I used the Dixie Belle boss and I used the clear. The entire front of this piece, this piece, this section over here that you can see the wood that we didn't paint yet, that has clear Dixie Belle boss on it. And it goes on white and within 20 minutes it's completely clear, which is amazing because as you're applying it, um, you know you are able to tell where you've been. Um, and I really, really liked that. And everybody, the 100th comment wins. Yes, the 100th comment of this video uh, wins the $25 and we will announce that on Monday so all right so I really really think that we've hit the mark here I like it a lot I'm gonna dry it uh, just for a minute um, I'm just gonna dry this so that we can get some get down and dirty with the wax uh, this is the wax that we're gonna use right here 
Um, it's called Best Dang Wax. Comes in a cute little tin like this. Best Dang Wax, and it's brown. And that's the wax that we are gonna use. And what's gonna be a little bit different about waxing tonight is a lot of times when you wax furniture, you just wanna put it, some, a lot of people put it all over and then they wipe it back. Um, we are not. We're gonna pick specifically exactly where we want the wax. Um, so we're gonna be in control of where it's going. And if you're wondering what this is, uh, this is a, a heat gun. It does not blow, it blows out very little air, but it blows out heat. You can see inside and it's orange and uh, it just speeds up the dry time. Yes. Um, is the boss a primer? The boss is a primer. It is a primer that stops bleed through, odors, and uh, nicotine stains. Yes. It comes in clear and white. And it did a great job because I did do a test spot here and I did, I did have bleed through. So I needed coverage for this piece and it, it did the job for me. All right, so I've done that. Yes, Matt? Um, how do you decide which color to mix together? Okay, so this is a custom piece, you guys. It, I didn't get to choose the overall color. The overall color for this piece, she wanted um, turquoise. She said turquoise or yellow. Well, the walls in the, it's going in a beach house. In the beach house, the walls are already yellow. So um, I decided to go with turquoise. I thought it was a lot more versatile. Um, but I did not want to go with this right here. I didn't want to go with just a flat. I didn't want to just slap paint on this gorgeous piece. I mean, look at it. It's got one, two, three, four beautiful panels. The sides look just like this. Um, I wanted to bring out the detail in the piece and um, I know this family, I've done several pieces over the years for um, all of the members of the family, the parents and the daughters and the sons and their families. And um, I just wanted to put a little extra effort into it. And so I decided that I would use variations of turquoise. So um, like I said, I'm using the mermaid's tail and pure ocean and um, the peacock. And those three colors are working really well for me. Now, I did add a little bit of the daisy, which this is a beautiful yellow. I did add a little bit of that on that post in the corners in the grungy area. Um, and I'll do the same thing on this post. I just added it for highlights in there. It kind of makes it look salty almost. Um, put it in there and then let, sprayed it with water and let it run down a little bit. But I'm not gonna do that on, on these front panels. All right, guys, so we're ready to get started now on um, the waxing. So what I'm doing with this wax, y'all, is I'm starting with just, I use these little artist brushes all the time. These are just little one inch flat artist brush. Um, I use them a lot. And I, uh, we are gonna get in here and start applying um, some wax. This is what the paste wax looks like and it's really, really good stuff. It's, uh, it's not super thick and hard to use. It smears and works really easily. So, um, yeah. Does it make it water resistant? Um, the wax does not make it water resistant. I will tell you though, this wax, you know, when you apply wax, um, you need to reapply wax like every six to nine months. And no, it's not super, it, it's not real resilient uh, as far as being water resistant. What is though in the end, and this piece will be covered with this, I'm using this dark wax for the effect that it's giving me, not for the protection. I'm using it for the color and the effect. Now you could use brown paint. You don't have to use the wax. You could use brown paint um, or a stain if you wanted to, but I, um, I'm choosing to use the wax because I wanted to try it and I really like it. I mean, look how natural that looks over there. But this piece, when I'm finished with this entire piece, it will be covered in um, gator hide, which their gator hide is, uh, repels water, not gators. So this is water repellent and this is a great finish. Um, I've already used this on a kitchen table already and I used it on a dresser, the cobalt blue baby dresser going in a baby's room and I'm gonna use it on this bar. And yes, Matt? Uh, we have a lot of people wondering what piece this is. What, what is it you're painting tonight? This is a bar. It is a full working bar that you would serve. Like people pull their stools up to and you would serve them cocktails. And it is a client of mine and it is going back to Rockport, Texas and it will be in their beach house. So they brought it here to me and I'm, I'm doing this on it. Yes. Are you using a cut brush to apply that wax? 
Uh, no, it's not a cut brush. This is a one inch brush. It's an artist brush, just a one inch flat artist brush. Um, I get these at Hobby Lobby and I use them for all kinds of things. Okay. Can you seal over that wax? You can, yes. The, uh, the Dixie Bell sealers and waxes are interchangeable. You can use wax first and then seal over that or you can use, which I'm going to, I'm going to seal with Gator Hide, or you can use sealer first and then wax on top of that so it wouldn't be so grabby in your paint. So they're interchangeable, whatever, there's no right or wrong way. So, all right, so what I do is I take my, my brush and I just kind of dab it in the wax, just like that. And you can see that it gets all over, it gets all over my brush like that. Then I take a paper plate and I kind of work it back out, just like this, on the paper plate. And I've got a rag, it's not wet, this is just a damp cloth. So I want to go up in here and I'm gonna start applying this up in the edges. I wanna focus in the, in the edges. So I hope you can see this. Do you wet the wax brush also? Uh, no, it was not wet. So I'm getting down in the cracks just like that and then I come back and I rub it with my brush. And actually, I think on this, I kind of did the whole, I think I did it like this. I need to get up off of my, I, oops, I think I lost my mic. Um, sorry guys, this piece is so big, I have to kind of get up and get in there. Is it hard to get the dark wax off if you want to apply a clear wax? No, it's not. Well, it is more grabby, but no, it's not hard. Um, I was surprised. I'm going to be, like I told you guys, I'm new to all these products, so y'all are learning along with me. And um, this wax, this was my first time to use it, and I was really, really impressed how workable it was, even though I didn't have a sealer over it so that it, I thought it, you know, it slides easier that way. Um, but this worked, was very, very easy to manipulate. And you know what, guys? Don't stress about it, really. If it doesn't, if, if it ends up too dark or you don't like it, um, and it, you can't rub it off, it's just, just paint over it and, and try it again. You know, I would just slap some turquoise paint back over this and try it again. Okay, so I've got this darkened here, and I'm gonna, this is the boring part. The fun part's coming, I promise. All right. Kind of getting down in that crevice. I want it to get in there really good and that, Anywhere that you think dirt would normally gather and hang out. I can't see over there very well, but I don't want to climb all the way over there in front. But you can see that I'm actually picking and choosing exactly where I want this to go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of wax on our brush and you can see here how it's shadowed in the corners. So this is what I do. I kind of hold my brush like this and I just start going like this. You want to catch it on those edges and just kind of darken the edges. You want to you want to create like a shadow. Yeah, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? Then get a clean part of your cloth and you just kind of come back and buff, buff that area. See how ugly it looks and you're kind of freaked out? But don't be. Oops, I got a little bit right there. Now, on the smaller section, I think that... I may need to sand that off. I think I may need to use a little bit of a bigger brush right there. So let me get this chip brush and see how that works because I think that that artist brush is too small. The artist brush was perfect for that size, but I think I need a flat, fluffier brush. So this is my chip brush. So let's see what we get if we do this side like that. I love, oh yeah, that's a much softer, uh, see how much easier that was? Much better. All right, so I'm gonna take that all the way down, get this corner. I 
I mean, I barely need to buff that there with the chip brush. Nice. See that? That looks good. Any other questions, ma'am? Uh, no, just a lot of people like what you're doing. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Okay, yeah. So, for sure, um, I told you about the one-inch artist brush, but when you're working on a huge flat panel, this is a really big flat panel, guys. That's a big opening. I mean, what is that like? I mean, two and a half feet wide there of just wide open space. So, I'm thinking the chip brush for shadowing on a bigger space like that is a lot better. So we're gonna. No, it does not. It's it doesn't have a shiny finish to it at all. It's actually, uh, it's pretty, pretty flat. It it does have. I'm looking over here. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it. Do you use a different brush for every paint? Yes, I do have a different brush going for every paint color. I sure do. Mm-hmm. And don't let brushes hold you back, guys. I mean, you know, if you don't have already a supply of brushes and paints and you're new and you're wanting to get started, invest in your paints first. I mean, a good brush can, uh, can be really helpful, but this paint is very, very forgiving and you really can use any brush with it. You really can. Okay, so now let's do this bottom row down here. Is that wax come in other colors? Um, the wax does. They have, actually they have glazes in other colors, um, and they have wax in, um, there's a black wax, um, a brown, a white, and clear, I think. Um, it came right off with soap and water. I think it's water, uh, water based or I don't know, but it came right off with soap and water. Okay. Can y'all see down in here? You guys, can you see, can y'all see that Matt? that this has no darkness to it in here, but yet this does. So now we're going to start making the base look really dirty. Um, so what I'm doing is putting again, putting uh, wax in my brush and I'm taking this, the reason I like it to be flat and one inch is so I can get straight down in that crevice. And um, I just am moving. Can you see me do this? Yeah. Do, you, do you prefer wax or glaze? Um, I have always been, I'm going to be honest, I've always been a glaze girl. And I did use glaze already from Dixie Belle. I used it on a turquoise breakfast table that I did, um, that I did actually over this color right here, Pure Ocean. I used this color, Pure Ocean, with the Van, D Van Dyke Brown Glaze, and it was beautiful. And it kind of turned the uh, turquoise table, it gave it more of a teal hint to it. Okay, do you see how I dirtied that up? And now I'm gonna do the same thing right here, just so it joins over here. Now the reason I would not use a glaze right here, you guys, is because if I were to glaze this entire piece, it's gonna change the color. Glaze, a colored glaze will change the color of your paint. If I were to put glaze all over this bar, it would not be this color that I worked so hard to figure out you know, what was the best color to get. It would change the color. So I am wanting to use a wax. I have a lot of control over where it's going. Um, there, it's not a whole lot of movement to it unless I'm moving it, and I just feel like it's a much better fit um, for this project. So, but I mean, you can change, you can use whatever you want. Like I said, you can use paints to do this. I just said I want a little bit more dirty on this layer because I did it on the other side, so I need it to match. If you use too much. You can, yes. If you use too much wax, you can use a clear wax. Clear wax will will pull back colored wax. So you can definitely uh, you can definitely do that. But you know what? Honestly, guys, a lot of times I just like I said, I just paint over it. <laughs> if I didn't like what happened, then I just paint over it. So you can see how much fun I'm having adding this, uh, really dirtying this up. 
It is a lot of fun. I mean, it's just giving it so much depth. And you are going to seal the whole thing? Yes, this entire back. thing. When, this, when I'm done with everything, I'll be sealing it with um, the gator hide. Now, I do... Um, I would play with this some more. We're on a time crunch right now, though. I'm going to play with this a little bit more. I have not quite enough. I mean, I'm being completely honest. I have not quite enough peacock coming out of this. If you look on that side, you can see more of the peacock coming out. So I want to add a little bit more peacock to this, and I will. I'll cut. The bottom is good. I think up here I need a little more peacock coming through. Okay, so now I'm going to take my brush. Let me show you another little, another little trick here. Actually, I'm going to use the chip brush again. Where did that go? So here's my chip brush again. Just dabbing it in to the wax out of my paint. All right, so I'm going to do this edge up here. I use it, I just put it flat. I just flatten it down and I just kind of run it over the edge like that. Can there we go. Quick rundown of the color you use on this one? Yes, I sure can. Um, I've got uh, Pure Ocean is the light. The outer, outer outside is Peacock. It's a darker teal, a darker uh, turquoise. And then I've got um, the greenish teal on the outside edges. Out here is Mermaid's, Mermaid's Tail. Are you saying that, baby, or someone said that? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I never know if, he, if he's reading a comment or just saying it. All right, so we've done that. Now I'm going to do this down this edge here, too. And I hope you can, hope you can see. And then after we do this, um, I don't think we're going to finish. But after we do this, I'm going to go back into stress a little bit. And I'm at an awkward angle, you, you guys, also. It kind of puts me in a little bit of a disadvantage normally, but I don't want to turn around, you know, and put my backside in, in your face, so. What do you prefer to use when you're applying the, the gator hide? Um, I actually used their sponge. Um, no, let me, let me take that back. On the No, did I use the sponge on the table? You, I think you were out here that day. Um, I've used both. I used brush. I believe on the uh, aqua colored table that I used, I don't know if you saw that, it's on my Facebook page, um, in front of the floral wallpaper, um, I used a brush. And on the cobalt blue dresser that I just did, that it's also on my Facebook page, um, I used the sponge applicator. And I really like the sponge applicator. However, it seemed to require more coats with the sponge applicator because obviously the sponge is sucking up some of it and you only get like good one swipe before you move on to the next row and another one swipe. And the brush, I was able to, to kind of lay it out a little bit more on there. So I really think it's just a preference, to be honest. How okay. are you going to show this, this project when you're finished? How am I going to show it? We'll stage it. Um, we'll stage it out here with my backdrops and We'll get good photos of it. Um, we'll take a photo of the front side, and then we'll also um, take photos of the inside. It's got a granite top on it, um, and uh, on the on the inside, I got distracted because Matt's like Matt's talking hand signals behind the camera. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> behind the camera, what are you doing? What? What you doing? Do you have any videos on kitchen cabinets? Do I have videos on kitchen cabinets? I do not have videos on kitchen cabinets. I've done a lot of kitchen cabinets, but I've never done a kitchen cabinet video because I didn't really want to be like known as a kitchen cabinet or try, you know, try to keep up with the kitchen cabinet painters because there are a lot of painters that, that are out there that are, that's all they do is kitchen cabinets. But, um, and I do mostly furniture. So no, I don't. Okay, so the next step is, um, like I said, I do want you to know that I am gonna come in and add some more up and down strokes of that, but I think you get the overall gist. So I wanna show you what I do next. Next, I'm going to distress, and um, the way that I'm gonna do that is I use, this is just my little, my little way I sand, um, unless I'm using an electric sander, really getting after it. Uh, but this piece, I'm being very specific. So I use a sanding block, but I don't like these. I don't like sanding blocks at all. They, I think they just basically suck. But I use it for cushion, and I wrap either a sandpaper or a disc one, or any sandpaper. Um, this one actually is a fine grit, 
Um, anyway, I, I just put it over it and I wrap it and I hold it. And this is how I've sanded furniture for years. Um, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna sand. I'm just gonna bring out the wood. You're just on the edges? Uh-huh, I'm doing just the edges, yeah. Now, um, I don't know if you can see that already, but on the corners, I always do a little bit heavier. So I just take this and really sand out that corner. You can wet distress Dixie Belle. You can wet distress Dixie Belle, yes. Mm -hmm. You sure can. Um, and and I sometimes, like, as I worked on that piece, on that side, it actually wet distressed for me a little bit. But I actually prefer for it to be a little bit more dry and then go in and choose exactly where I'm wanting to sand. Okay, so I can go ahead and sand. I do like to smooth out um, all chalk paint. All chalk paint does... When you put it on, it's kind of got a gritty feel to it. If you'll just take some fine sandpaper or even a paper bag that you've crumpled up um, and just run it over the outside of it, it gives it a beautiful, uh, soft, buttery, buttery smooth feel. Nice feel to it. And then it kind of gives more of a drier look. However, when you put your sealer on there, it deepens back up. Your, all of your color comes back, I promise. All of the color comes back when you seal it. Now that side over there is not sealed yet. So can you see where I distressed on those edges, Matt? Can you see that? Can y'all see yep. here where it's been distressed? And then I just did this top ridge and I'm going to do this ridge right here. Just like that. Okay. Now, one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my water bottle, and you might wanna stay forward a little bit. Um, I'm gonna kinda spritz this whole thing. Um, if you look, can you kinda zoom in for them right here? Can y'all see this right here, you guys? See the water spots? On this I did that on purpose can you can they see do you yes, think? I think so, so I'm gonna take this water bottle and I'm just gonna kind of just go like that just like that and you just sometimes you get it sometimes you don't you just kind of hope for it <laughs> but uh, if you don't mess with it and you let that water kind of sit there it leaves like a little watermark in the paint and it's so cool it is so cool I love it and I can tell I'm gonna get some right here and I really I like that if you spray a lot and you've just recently painted you'll get like some good drips but I'm not really after the drips I'm more after like a sprayed look is kind of what I want so um, so that's that and um, does anyone have any questions I think I'm gonna turn around here and just talk to you guys for a second and um, Matt will you let me know. Sure. <laughs> Anyone? It takes a while for once you ask yeah. the question for things yeah. to Yeah. Yep. So I, we didn't get to finish. We did not get to finish. Um, I do, I'm going to do this exact same technique to this entire top and to this and take it across the bottom. I'll get it all matched up for you. I'll get this matched up a little bit better than that, but I need to get in front of it. I need to be like in front of that with my right hand and um, get that worked out. But I still think... Um, Overall, it now look, can you see the difference? You remember this, this panel 30 minutes ago or however long ago looked like this. So you can definitely see all the variations in color and um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I think we are getting some water spots. So um, anyway, I think that's it. Unless something comes up while I'm saying goodbye, Matt, you can let me know. Um, I really appreciate you guys joining us here on Friday on a Friday night. Uh, Matt and I have a movie date. We're going to a movie when we're done here. 
Yep. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you again and thank you Dixie Bell for having me on and uh, you can look for a local retailer in your area and uh, or you can order from the Dixie Bell paint page and please go follow me on Tracy's Fancy on Facebook and Instagram. I would really, really love to have you follow along in all of my future Dixie Bell um, paint projects. And um, don't forget that we will be give, announcing a winner on Monday night and hopefully whoever the, hopefully, um, hopefully you're the one who left the hundredth comment. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll go back and check to see if anyone's got any questions that I can help answer. I will do that too. Matt? Thanks guys. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys have a good weekend. Bye-bye.